Call me Master Zang cause I'm a flippy bass you see this stupid title, man? Long title, wife something. Hey, man. Going crazy. Let's go. A writer's assistant spends an eventful summer in a renowned author's home and finds himself caught amid a fractured marriage. In the hallway, Ruth pulls up a chair to look at one of the pictures of her late brothers, Thomas and Timothy, when they were children. Then, her father, Ted Cole, a famous children's book author, joins her, and she asks him what being dead means. The man says that although her brother's bodies are buried in the ground, they continue to exist in her imagination. Ruth shares that thinking about her late siblings makes her sad but acknowledges that their passing continues to haunt her mother. Later, Ted speaks on the phone with Minty O'Hare, his son's former English teacher. That evening, he joins his wife Marian in the yard and remarks how he wants to build a pool for Ruth. Then, Ted shows the woman a picture of Eddie, Minty's son, whom he says wants to apply for a summer job as his writing assistant. Marian asks what he expects the assistant to do for him, so the author says he'll be there mainly for experience since Eddie's an aspiring writer. Moments later, the man tells his wife that he wants them to do a trial separation for the summer. Though surprised by his proposal, Marion remains calm and silent, prompting Ted to stand and leave. Meanwhile, Eddie watches Ted's interview on TV, and his father advises him not to let the author's fame make him nervous. Minty tells his son to absorb what he can from his summer experience and see if he can figure out a method to the writer's madness. That night, huh? Ruth wakes her father up because she hears a noise, which she describes as a sound like someone trying not to make a sound. Ted finds her description fascinating so he writes it down in a notepad on the bedside table. Then, the man takes his daughter back to her room and tells her a story of her brothers waking up from a noise, which he explained was from a mouse scurrying inside the walls. After Ted tucks Ruth in bed, the girl asks where her mother is. So the father says she's in the other house, but that she'll be there in the morning. Minutes later, the author types what his daughter said earlier and realizes he found the title for his next book. Days later, Marion sits in her car by the port with a left turn signal blinking. Eventually, she waits for Eddie amongst the disembarking ferry passengers and introduces herself. By the vehicle, the woman states the importance of the assistant's driving ability since Ted lost his license three months ago. Before tossing him the keys, Marion tells Eddie to refer to her and her husband by their first names. When they reach the house, Fuck no! That's when she starts. Eddie asks the woman if she'll be joining them inside, but she says not tonight. After she drives off, the assistant meets the author and thanks him for the opportunity. Eddie shares that he's read all his books, citing The Door and the Floor as his favorite. He says he's written a story and would appreciate it if Ted reads it during his free time. The author takes Eddie to his workspace and says he'll need squid ink tomorrow since he's decided to use it for his drawings in his next book. Then, Ted reveals that he and his wife are on a trial separation, which means they'll alternate spending time in the house and a rented apartment in town. Ah, Later, why? The searches for his hey, um, pro they, pro they probably have said that shit in, in the start of the, of the video. My bad, bro. I be, I be zoned out. <laughs> room in the house, he stops to look at the framed photographs in the hallway. Suddenly, a frightened Ruth screeches and runs away when she sees the unfamiliar man. That afternoon, Ruth's nanny, Alice, asks Eddie if he saw Who it is? Oh no, Shadi was good with you trying to fuck with Ruth. <laughs> which she calls a creepy shrine. The next day, the assistant picks up the extracted squid ink. In the kitchen, the author tells Eddie to dispense the liquid into an ice cube tray and freeze it. In his studio, Ted instructs Evelyn Vaughn to remove her clothes as he watches her curiously. That night, Eddie catches Ruth talking to herself while looking at her brother's photographs. The next day at the rented apartment, the assistant lovingly inhales Marion's scent from her pillow. That evening, Eddie strolls on the beach, where he sees Alice and her friends setting off fireworks. Later, he spots Marion in the same movie theater and steals glances at her. After the movie, Eddie waits outside and pretends to run into the woman. When she learns that Ted hasn't been providing his assistant with decent meals, Marion asks the man if he'd like to join her for dinner one night, and he accepts. In his bedroom, Eddie takes a framed photo of the woman and covers her children's feet with pieces of paper so he doesn't see them while he pleasures himself to <laughs> Yo, 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 <laughs> nah, he down terrible, bro. Nah, he, you telling me there's no picture of this female, bro? You had to take that picture? Come on, bro. That is fucked up, bro. It doesn't even matter. It's like, it's same as like, they fucking in the bed and the kids are over there. And they, they just told the kids, yo, cover your eyes. 
Why are the kids are there? The kids, they didn't say, yo, kids, go outside or go somewhere else. No. They just told the, it's like they just told the kids, yo, stay there, close your eyes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Suddenly, Ted barges into the room with Ruth, causing the assistant to hurry and return the picture on the wall. The author says his daughter <sighs> likes to look at specific pictures around the house so that she knows they're still there. When she spots the photograph, the girl asks where her brother's feet are, but Ted brushes off her concern to the assistant's relief. After the father and daughter leave, Eddie quickly removes the tape paper from the picture. Days later, the assistant sees Evelyn leaving the apartment with Ted, revealing that they've been sleeping with each other. That afternoon, he hides in the dunes and watches a swimsuit-clad Marion walk along the beach. Later, Eddie touches himself as he looks at the woman's undergarments on the bed. I'm not, I'm not, I'm gonna say this. I'm not, I'm gonna say this, bro. I don't really get the hype of doing that shit, you feel me? I don't really get the hype of smelling, you feel me? The other person's clothes. I don't really get the hype of like, like, bro, y'all niggas get, y'all niggas get rock hard over that shit. Bro, if you was here, then I'm not gonna lie to you. Y'all niggas would be shit. If y'all rock hard from clothes, clothes, we're talking about clothes right now, not pictures. Clothes, fam. Come on, hell no. Nah. Suddenly, that's Marian some freak air boys, man. Him in the act. To assure the embarrassed assistant that she isn't angry, she explains that it was her fault for failing to knock first. Then, the woman asks him to sit next to her, and she says she understands what he was doing is natural for people his age, and she is flattered that someone thinks about her that way. However, Eddie explains that when he looked at her undergarments, he remembered the pink sweater she wore when they first met and how it must feel against her skin. Unsure how to react, Marion stands up, grabs the garbage bag, and instructs the assistant to take it out when he leaves. Days later, when Eddie returns to the apartment, he sees that Marion left her pink sweater and un Garments on the bed for him. That <laughs> evening, the woman takes the assistant out to dinner. Where she oh, hell no! Nah. <sighs> he hasn't asked Alice out on a date, and Eddie says it's because the nanny isn't his type. Moments later, Marion shares that she and Ted should have never had Ruth. She says they moved to the Hamptons after their son's death so they could start a new life with a new child in a new house. But she admits she doesn't know how to be a mother to Ruth. The next day, the woman seduces the assistant when she learns- Wait, what do you mean don't know how to be a mother to Ruth? You you had a kid, a, 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 a killer boy. A boy kid. What the hell it is, man? Eesh. Slang word. Son's death so they could start a new life with a new child in a new house. But she admits she doesn't know how to be a mother to Ruth. The next day, the woman seduces the assistant when she learns he's never made love. That afternoon, Ted sees Eddie and an upbeat Marion walking along the property's edge. That evening, the writer does a public book reading of The Door in the Floor. While Eddie drives Ted home, the author thanks the assistant for being a good friend to his wife, whom he hasn't seen smile for a long time. For the next few days, the woman and the assistant continue their oh, apartment. Bit dog, you only know they're fucking your wife, bit dog. What well, shit? That's karma for you, cause he out here going crazy with a, with another female though. That night, the man receives a call about Ted's whereabouts. When Eddie finds the writer drunkenly biking on the road, he asks if he'd like a ride. However, the author declines the offer and tells his assistant to head home. The next day, Ted paints Evelyn's clothesless image using squid ink. Later, the writer and the assistant play squash on the court inside the barn. That night, Ruth follows a noise from her parents' bedroom and sees her mother and Eddie making love. The following ah. day, Ted tells the assistant that his daughter told him what she saw. He says he isn't angry but warns the man that if he's called to court to testify about which parent is fit for custody, he needs to swear to tell the truth. The writer says he takes precautions to ensure Ruth never sees him with another woman, while Marion is careless. Later, the woman tells Eddie she's never been unfaithful to her husband. The man asks why she never thought to leave Ted. So the woman says it's because he is the only other person who truly understands how she feels regarding their son's deaths. 
days later, Marion tells the assistant that her husband's affairs usually start with him sketching a mother and a child, then the mother clothless, until it ends in a degradation phase, the stage she believes Evelyn's currently in. Meanwhile, Ted sternly orders the model to pose correctly in his studio. One night, Eddie asks Marion to tell him about the accident that took Thomas and Timothy's lives. However, instead of answering the question, the woman lies silently on the couch with a blank look on Yo, bitch, I just asked you a question. You gonna tell me or not? What the fuck? Man, what happened to them little ass niggas, man? I'm trying to know. Oh, shit, you not getting this D. <laughs> her face. <laughs> Suddenly, the assistant <laughs> hears Ruth calling for her mother, so he checks on the child. In the bathroom... The man, hey, man, I don't know, bro. The way, like... In movies, bro, every time there's a black character, I just feel, I just remember, like, old movies, like, every time they add a black character, it gotta be a... Yo. Gotta be a, a hood-ass character. Hey, what's good with y'all, my nigga? Like, Y'all already know the stereotypical loud, yeah, loud cursing. This and the top of black black person. Hey. Asks Eddie what he did to the picture when he covered her brother's feet with paper. The man suggests she must have dreamt it, but Ruth insists she wasn't. Before taking her back to her room, the child asks to take the framed photograph with her. The next day, the assistant wakes to Ruth's cries, and he finds her in the bathroom with Mary intending to her cut, which she sustained from the broken frame. In the clinic, the doctor stitches the girl's cut, and she asks her mother if she is going to die, so the woman assures she'll be okay. Later, Eddie tries to tell Ted that it was his fault for allowing Ruth to keep the picture. However, the author blames his wife because she should have attended to their daughter last night. That evening, the child cries for her mother after a bad dream, prompting the writer to call Marion to come over and calm her down. Then, Ted tells Eddie to drive him to the apartment where he'll spend the night. The next day at the beach, Marion tells the assistant about her decision to leave Ted and Ruth for good. When the man asks why, the woman says she has already stayed too long. That afternoon, the writer tells Eddie to give Evelyn the sketches he drew of her body in exchange for his portfolio. The assistant thinks it'll be awkward asking for the portfolio on his behalf, but Ted insists it'll be okay. In the woman's house, she expresses that she doesn't understand why the writer is giving her the crude sketches. When Eddie fails to give her an explanation, she chases her out of the house, and the front door closes, locking her out. So Evelyn orders the assistant to break the glass door and carry her back inside. Later, Eddie tells Ted everything that Hold on, bro. My bad, bro. I just gotta go, but what? Out of the house. And the front door closes, locking her out. So Evelyn orders the assistant to break the glass door and carry her back inside. Why is she... Why is he carrying her? What the fuck? Did she get hurt? No, she... The boy just break that the window. She gets in. Simple. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Maybe you might say, because he broke the window, the pieces of glass are on the floor, so... He's wearing shoes. Okay, let me. Okay, I'm gonna chill my dumbass. Get, you gotta get. You gotta give me props. I do be sometimes dozing off and not thinking straight. This time at least I, I'm growing up. <laughs> Later, Eddie tells Ted everything that happened and says the woman wasn't happy about receiving the sketches. The author instructs the assistant to wait for him outside the woman's house for 30 minutes on Friday since he anticipates a short session with the incense sketch model. The next day, Marion tells Eddie to leave Ted at Evelyn's house on Friday, so it'll take the husband all day to get home. On Friday, the writer tells his assistant that he read his story. He offers constructive criticism but says it's a decent story for a first effort. When they reach Evelyn's house, Ted sees the gardener cleaning up the torn sketches thrown all over the yard and bushes. Then, he tells Eddie to wait five minutes, but the assistant drives away immediately. Later, Marion advises the assistant to punch the writer if he slaps him first. As the woman prepares her belongings, the man asks who'll explain the situation to Ruth. She says she'd rather be no mother than be a bad one to the child, and adds that she doesn't want her daughter to be like her. Before huh? Eddie takes Ruth to get her stitches removed, Marion tells her daughter not to cry at the clinic. The woman takes the assistant's hand and places it over her heart. He professes his love for her, but she responds with a final goodbye. Damn. Meanwhile, the furious Evelyn chases Ted out of the house with a knife. The author runs past the curious gardener, Eduardo, and tries to hide in the prickly bush. When the woman tries to run Ted over with her car, the gardener
gardener yells at the author to run, so the man sprints to the nearby beach, where Evelyn continues chasing him on foot. After getting the stitches removed, Ruth asks Eddie if they can head to the frame shop to see if the picture's been repaired. Concurrently, Ted seeks refuge in the local bookshop owned by Mr. Mendelssohn. Meanwhile, Evelyn fires Eduardo for warning the author when she was about to run him over. At the frame shop, the owner asks why Eddie urgently needs the picture of Marion and her son's feet, so the assistant writes down the reason. He writes that Marion's leaving her family and taking all of Thomas and Timothy's pictures with her. So when Ruth returns home, she won't have any photos of her mother and brothers anymore. And the only one she'll ever have is the photograph at the frame shop. Eventually, the sympathetic woman says she'll check if the picture is ready so they can have it. Outside Evelyn's house, the scorned gardener scatters the torn sketches <laughs> over the yard. Hey man, I would have done the same thing. Boy, hell no. After the owner hands over the repaired frame, she asks through a note if Marion's leaving Eddie as well, and he affirms. She offers her sympathy and says he can see her if he needs a job next summer. At the bookshop, Ted meets Glory, a fan who wrote an English term paper on one of his books. He gon' fuck. And he asks her for a ride home. Later, he stops by the fan's house where he changes into clean clothes and meets her mother. On the drive back to the house, Ted suggests hiring the mother and daughter to be his sketch models for his next book. As they pass Evelyn's estate, the woman asks what type of drawings he typically does. Before he can answer, one of the crew drawings lands on the windshield, flustering the passengers. When they reach the house, the author sees Marion placing her luggage in her car. Wordlessly, the couple shares one last loving look before the woman drives away. Meanwhile, Ted and Ruth have lunch by the beach. He tells the child that whenever she's scared, all she needs to do is look at her scar. When they return home, the annoyed author asks where the assistant went after he left him at Evelyn's house. Instead of explaining, Eddie hands Ted the notes he wrote at the frame shop, then adds that it's the only good writing he did all summer. Inside the house, Ruth asks the assistant, then her father, where the other pictures are, but both men give vague answers. Later, Ted furiously asks Eddie where Marion is and then slaps him. In retaliation, the assistant remembers the woman's advice and punches oh. the writer's nose. The exasperated author exclaims <laughs> his wife won't have custody of Ruth after what she's done. I forgot about it. I forgot he, she, she, he, she, she. Fucking hell, man. I forgot that she tell this nigga to punch the living crap out of that boy. As the woman never intended to. Ted wonders why his wife took all the pictures when she could have had her own copies printed using the negatives. However, the assistant reveals the woman took the negatives with her as well, which is why he made sure to retrieve the lone remaining photo from the frame shop. Then, the writer says he wants Eddie out of the house tomorrow. Meanwhile, Ruth tells Alice to describe the missing pictures in the hallway. But when the nanny carries her away, the child screams that she wants to stay. Later, the upset Alice quits, stating that she's had enough of the dysfunctional family. That evening, Ted offers Eddie his drawings of Marion, but the assistant says Ruth should have them. Hours later, the author enters the assistant's bedroom and finally tells- Hey man, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, they better be nice or something like- the, the, the assistant and, and, and what and, and the author end up having intercourse. Y'all better not say that goofy ass shit, folks. Tells him about the accident. The man recalls the family trip to the ski resort, where he and Marion got drunk at the bar. On the drive back to the hotel, Thomas was behind the wheel, Timothy was in the front passenger seat, and the parents were in the back seat. Oh. Because he was inebriated, Ted forgot to clear the snow from the car headlights and blinkers. Unfortunately, an approaching vehicle didn't see their car and rear-ended them, causing them to crash onto a snowplow. Thomas died instantly and Timothy survived for several minutes, but he eventually passed passed away due to blood loss from the snowplow severing his leg. Yeah. At first, Marion thought Timothy survived after the paramedics took him away. However, she found his detached leg and realized hey. that her younger son died as well. Before leaving Eddie's room, Ted reveals he hired him because he resembles Thomas. Then, he admits that the assistant was a gift to Marion. The next day, Eduardo drops by the house to tell the author that he lost his job because he warned him about Evelyn yesterday. Ted thinks he's there to ask for money, but the gardener says he only wants a job. So the relieved man hires him to build the pool and become the permanent groundskeeper. Before Eduardo takes Eddie to the ferry port, Ted shakes the assistant's hand and sends him on his way. Days later, Ruth helps the gardener trim the bushes while Ted finishes playing squash in the barn. Suddenly, the tired man opens a door in the floor, descends the steps, and closes the hatch. Subscribe to one. Do it! Come on, bro. You cannot just leave us on a cliffhanger like that, big dog. Man, I, man, like the video, bro. 
So I put a channel. I'm gonna send this video, bro. Why you gotta do? That was a dude who have like, come on, bro. Come on, man. Call me Mr. Zen, cause I'm a flippy bands.